What's going on, my homies? Jolt here from the Token Minorities, and I am back with a brand new draft analysis for you guys today. We're going to be going over my team for a brand new league. It is called the Last Battle Circuit, hosted by, uh, or I guess commissioned by Kyle A., a uh, coach in the most recent season of the GBA. But before I dive into anything about this league, I wanted to give just a very brief acknowledgement wrap up, I guess, for the uh, the GBA season. You haven't seen any content from me for the GBA over the past couple weeks, so I wanted to say congratulations to our champion this season, who was Randy, the uh, the guy who knocked us out in the semifinals. So huge congrats to him. If you haven't seen the finals game already, then I'm sorry for the spoiler, but uh, definitely go back and watch that game as him against Leo. It was an absolutely ridiculous game. It was a really fun watch. So uh, make sure to go give that a look. But uh, obviously our season of the GBA ended a little bit earlier than we we wanted it to end. I really thought we had a good shot at the uh, the title this season, but just wasn't meant to be. But we're going to try to bounce back here with this league, which uh, promises to be a pretty pretty fun experience. So this is going to be a uh, more standard league in terms of the type of Pokemon that can be drafted. It's still going to be a tiers based league, uh, but there's not going to be stuff like Magearna and Groudon, you know, on my uh, on my draft this time around. As much as that's kind of disappointing to not be able to to use that stuff, I'm definitely pretty happy that it. I don't have to prep for that stuff now uh, throughout the course of this league, but it is going to be a pretty short league relatively. I believe it's only eight weeks during the regular season plus playoffs. So uh, this is basically just going to be the, the league that I'm uploading for to close out the generation uh, as we're going to have those nice generation eight games coming up here uh, sooner than we think, uh, sooner than it feels like as uh, those, yeah, those are not too far away. So uh, looking forward to that. Hope you guys are as well, but this is going to be be the uh, the league that we're focusing on for the time being so the last battle circuit has a lot of cool coaches that have actually I believe in almost every single case aside from Kyle a, I don't think I've played any of the people who are in this league I thought oh, I played Panther so Panther is a, the commissioner of the APA I played him in the surge tournament that we held a year ago so I played him there I played Kyle a and little cup before but other than that, I haven't played any of these guys, which is going to be kind of cool. Uh, going to see a lot of new faces here in this league. If you want to go check out the channels of the other coaches that are going to be playing in this league, they're all going to be linked down in the description below. Go give them a look. Uh, click that subscribe button so you can uh, watch all the battles here throughout the, throughout the course of this season. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this draft analysis. So for this league, what I really wanted to do was I wanted to draft a bunch of Pokemon that I haven't used at all or very much throughout the course of this generation as this is my final league for gen 7 i wanted to make sure i can use a lot of these pokemon that i've been wanting to try out but just haven't really had the best opportunity to do that so a lot of my draft plan is kind of geared around trying to select some of those types of pokemon and uh, we'll I'll, I'll try to point those out i guess as we go through but anyways my draft position was at the back wheel which is actually a really good draft position because there's 12 people in this league and normally the back wheel is, is pretty good even when there's like 16 people but the downside is typically that there's not too many of the, like the amazing pokemon that are remaining at that point in the draft but with only 12 people i would argue that the back wheel might very well be the best position to uh, possibly have honestly in this draft because what we're going to see here with my first pick i'll start with just one with my first pick i went with something that i is not new to me whatsoever it's something that i've had many times but i just never get tired of it and uh, that's mew so we got mew once again we just had it in the gba and uh, you know i'm excited to use it once again i don't have access to munium z uh on the mew in this league in fact every pokemon on the draft is able to use uh, z crystals so that's kind of a unique rule about this league compared to any of the other leagues I've played in in the past. But uh, yeah, so we got Mew this time around. I can use Z-Crystals on it if I want to, and it's probably going to be a much 
more uh, prominent sweeper threat on this team than it was on my GBA team that you guys just watched here for a long time, as obviously on the GBA team it wasn't really the primary threat on my team when I had stuff like Groudon and Magirna to kind of steal all the kills during most of my games. So uh, really looking forward to using Mew once again. It never gets old. I'm going to always enjoy using Mew as long as it remains a versatile Pokemon in the format. So that is the first pick, but like I said, this is a wheel, and there was another Pokemon that is almost always a round one staple in almost every single league that was still on the board, and that is Zygarde 50. So we pick up Mew Zygarde 50 with the first two picks of this draft, which is absolutely ridiculous okay having both of these pokemon on the same team is something i never expected to ever have happen unless it's in like a team's tournament where we get we're able to like collectively form our drafts and uh yeah so i have mu zygarde on the same team that's going to be really fun let me tell you as both of those can use z crystals which just on its own makes zygarde 50 twice as good and all honesty it makes zygarde 50 twice as good whenever it's able to have access to a z crystal to really maximize its sweeping potential is really that that's all it needs to get that power boost that it needs to break through some of the more fat annoying walls that are otherwise able to deal with Zygarde so having Zygarde 50 is going to be really fun I've only ever had Zygarde 50 in tournament play I've never actually drafted Zygarde for a full league so that's going to be a new experience for me here for sure I'm look, really looking forward to uh, using Zygarde for for a longer period of time as well as using it in conjunction with something like Mew I think that's something that can be a really annoying combination for for anyone to really prep for here in this league so uh, we're starting this off with a pretty pretty decent combination of Mew and Zygarde 50 but for my my next pickup this is where it gets a little bit interesting so just keep in mind I guess there's a rule in this league where we can actually make transactions immediately after the draft uh, and they'd be effective for the week one battle so this is where that comes into play for my team it comes into play in two situations but this is like the bigger the more notable one of the two so originally in this position I picked up Suicune which everyone probably knows Suicune's kind of ridiculous in draft format it's able to just stall out pretty much anything but uh, given how the rest of my team ended up forming what I actually did was drop Suicune for Rotom Wash so Rotom Wash is actually what's going to be on my team and I know that probably sounds a little bit weird Suicune is able to single-handedly sweep several teams while Rotom really doesn't. Rotom is more of like a bulky pivot, but just bear with me. You'll kind of understand where Rotom fits into the mold of this draft as we move forward in this analysis. I really think Rotom Watch was the better overall choice for my team given the pieces that I had drafted for to fill out the rest of the team. Suicune's always going to be good, but I really needed the type resistances that Rotom Watch provides as well as just being that bulky momentum option. I felt like Suicune kind of lost my team a lot of momentum. And momentum is going to be a really key word here as we go throughout the rest of this draft as this is going to be one of my, uh, I think one of my first, I've had like one in the past, but it's, it's going to be a really heavily Volt Turn oriented draft uh, this time around because I have a lot of Pokemon that I want to try to get, in, get, in, get into the game in specific situations where I can set up pretty easily and Volt Turn is going to help me do that. For example, getting in stuff like Zygarde and something that's forced out by Zygarde is a really big deal because it gives me a free like 100% free Dragon Dance or Mew can get 100% free like Calm Mind, Bulk Up, SD, whatever I want to have. Volt turns really good to help me do that. Uh, so anyways that's why we picked up Rotom Wash. Also nice as a defogger obviously. Uh, dual screens I guess if I want to do that it's a good scarper. So it just it fills a lot of nice niche roles on the on this team. So next up after picking up Rotom Wash I went with another Pokemon that was a little bit underrated uh, in the sense that when it has a Z crystal when it has z crystal access it becomes significantly better and that's cobalion so i've had cobalion several times in the past as well but not as a z crystal user uh, aside from just playing in tournaments so this is another one of those examples kind of like zygarde where i haven't really been able to use this specific pokemon in in league play over a stretch period of time uh, so i really wanted to have that chance with cobalion i know z cobalion is an absolute monster
monster in Yu Yu, uh, at least in the limited amount of time that I played Smoke on Tears this generation. And uh, even so, I've seen it do a lot of work in draft format as well. It just needs that little bit of a power boost from a Z Crystal to become an enormous offensive setup threat. Uh, with access to Rock Polish and SD, it's a dual uh, dual setup threat as well. So Kabalga just overall is really nice. Also a solid Steel type, another Rocker to take some Rocks pressure off of my Mew. And it also has access to Momentum. So another Momentum Mon joins the team along with the Mew and the Rotom Wash. So overall Kabalga and just a really nice Pokemon, a good Steel type. And uh, yeah, so that is the fourth Pokemon on the team. But now we're going to jump on over to my Mega Evolution. Now I have used a lot of different Mega Evolutions over the course of the past two generations. I'm going to go ahead and loop those two together because the, the use of a Mega really didn't change much from Oras to uh, Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Moon. So I wanted to make sure I picked up a Mega that I haven't used before and fits the mold of this team really well. Now I've told you already the mold, the theme of this team is Volturn. So I bet you guys can already guess what Mega Evolution I decided to pick up for this team, and no, it is not Mega Scizor. <laughs> It is Mega Beedrill. So Mega Beedrill, I'm finally going to have the chance to use an absolutely monstrous threat. Adaptability with a really high base attack stat is going to make this thing a huge pain for opponents to deal with, especially when I can get them so easily trapped in a Volt Turn combination, which my team is going to be able to so easily dish out from week after week after week. So yeah, Mega Beedrill, just really solid. I think it's been used very well by a few select people in the Draft League community. Most notably, I would say the Verd has been the best user of Mega Beedrill. Shout out to Verd. If you haven't ever watched his Draft League content, make sure to go check him out as well. Uh, I'll try to remember to link him down below. He was an old NPL coach when I was in that league. Uh, but anyways, he used Mega Beedrill incredibly well. It's probably the best I've ever seen someone use Mega Beedrill. So I'm going to try to replicate that with how I use it throughout the season. And yes, that includes some potentially bulkier Mega Beedrill sets. So be on the lookout for that. I think this could be a pretty fun Pokemon to use uh, in, in that type of context, as well as just being a super annoying momentum gainer and breaker for, uh, for opposing teams. So that's the Mega that we are packing for this season. Then we have a Fairy type that I've never used ever in draft format, which is kind of surprising. I've used almost every single Fairy type, in all honesty. Aside from, I think, Tapu Bulu, Tapu Lele, I've used pretty much every single other fairy type at some point in draft format, but I've never used Togekiss. So I'm going to be bringing in Togekiss this season. Serene Grace is on my side, which is always a good thing. Uh, unless I'm against like a Jirachi, I will have the hacks hopefully in my favor, which, uh, yeah, well, we'll see if that helps me out throughout the season. I might just whip out a Scarf Togekiss if I'm feeling a little bit, uh, a uh, little bit irritated with Pokemon luck in my life. I might just whip, whip out something like that. And yeah, so just a good defogger, really good fairy type, I think, being a setup threat as well as a baton pass threat, as baton pass is legal in this league as well. I know that speed pass is legal, but only as like speed pass alone. I think a Togekiss might get agility. I'll need to look into that. I know it gets nasty plot, so I could nasty pass with this if I want to. I could sub pass with this if I want to. So it can kind of fill that type of role uh, in addition to being just a really annoying breaker for bulky Pokemon. T-Way plus Air Slash is always annoying. And, uh, you know, I <laughs> don't, don't put it past me. I'll probably bring that at some point if there's the, if the matchup calls for it. It's just something that's likely to happen. So, uh, yeah, Togekiss just overall pretty solid. I've seen it used pretty well by other people in the past, but, uh, you know, never really had my own opportunity to, uh, to use it. So we're going to whip out the nice Togekiss here, and we will see how that goes for me. So then... That is, what, six Pokemon down? Next up is going to be a Pokemon that I haven't used in a very long time. In fact, all the way back in NPL Season 3 was the last time that I used this Pokemon. Shout out to those of you guys who've been around for so long that you know exactly when that season took place in the NPL. It is Porygon Z. Porygon Z returns to the KC Jirachi Chiefs. At the time, it was the Toronto Star Raptors, but, you know, it's the same coach, so. Anyway, Porygon Z is coming in for this team. 
I really wanted Porygon Z because my team lacked a special breaking presence, uh, offensive breaking presence, and Porygon Z can definitely supply that. Download adaptability, two incredible abilities. I now have two adaptability mods on my team, so that will be fun as well. Uh, but yeah, just a really strong normal spam user with solid coverage, and honestly, Styx used Porygon Z so well recently that I really wanted to give it a shot, <laughs> and I felt like it's going to fit this team really well when I am so Volt Turn or oriented, I'm going to get myself in positions where Porygon Z can come in for free and can dish out a massive hit against something that's trying to switch in. As Just think think about like a Specs adaptability try attack. Even against something that resists that hit, it might get to a KO'd in all honesty. If it's not like a really bulky Pokemon, it very well might get to a KO'd by that type of attack. So Porygon Z hits super freaking hard and I'm excited to try to use it again here in this season on this team. So that is my special breaker. I believe that's the only real special breaker on the team, but that's okay because I do have a lot of other uh, solid options like Togekiss can set up a nasty plot and start to break things. Mew can set up a nasty plot and break things. So I have other ways to break stuff on the special side, but uh, Porygon Z is going to be the most efficient way of doing that, I think, on, uh, on this particular team. So then next up, I'm going to start turning into more of my, uh, I guess, some supportive Pokemon uh, as well as one more more uh, one more offensive member here in a sec, but uh, turning to a little bit of support, I'm going to go ahead and grab my Dark type, as every team needs a good Dark type, and that Dark type is going to be the Alolan Persian. This is a Pokemon I've had on several tournament teams. I've had it as a uh, non Z Move user in one of my Wi Fi leagues. I can't remember which one off the top of my head, but I know. Oh no, it was the GBA. It was the GBA uh, Season 8, I believe, when I had Alolan Persian without Z Crystals, and it was a little bit underwhelming at the time, but I've seen it used, and I have personally used it in tournament play with the Z Crystal. Z Parting Shot is absolutely amazing on uh, on Alolan Persian, and I think on my team in general, it's going to really help support stuff like Zygarde and Mew. So I wanted to go with Alolan Persian for that, but just having a nice, fast, dark type that has access to something like Foul Play and Knock Off, I think can be really helpful for my team as well. Fur Coat is nice too to be able to just switch into physical hits that might be a little bit annoying for other members of my team to deal with. It's just overall a solid Pokemon, and uh, yeah, I just think it fits the team really well, <laughs> and we'll, uh, we'll have to see how it performs for me here. So that is the Alolan Persian. Then we have yet another Alolan form that's going to be joining this roster, and this is one I've never tried before. I've seen a couple people attempt to use it in the past, and I think it fits this team incredibly well too due to its typing and due to the type resistances that the rest of my team is able to provide. And that is the Alolan Marowak. So Alolan Marowak is coming in here for this draft. A really powerful physical breaker when it's holding its thick club and just an awesome set of abilities. It has access to Rockhead and Lightning Rod, both of which have a lot of utility. Lightning Rod can make me a pure counter to different types, different electric types, especially in combination with Zygarde. Zygarde and the Lola Marowak collectively can pretty much wall any electric type, almost any electric type. There's a few like thunderous forms can bring coverage to hit both of those Pokemon, but that's what the rest of my team is for as well. So I can still deal with stuff like that, but other than just the thunderous forms, I believe that combination counters any electric type. So that's going to be pretty nice for sure if I opt to run the Lightning Rod ability in those matchups. But Thick Club allows me to Flare Blitz spam uh, with ease, honestly. Nothing switches in nicely to a reckless Thick Club boosted Flare Blitz from Alolan Marowak. And all the Volt Turn I'm going to be having with my team is going to give me a lot of opportunities to uh, fire stuff like that off. Shadow Bone is also a really powerful move that Alolan Marowak can use. And, you know, I think it just has a lot of potential. It's one of those mods that I think has never really reached its full potential in draft format. And I'm down to try to take on that challenge. So we'll, we'll see what Alola Marowak can do here for my team. I tried to support it about as well as I could. And we'll just have to see what uh, what happens on that. But that's the Alolan Whack. Then we have another Pokemon that uh, I actually picked up and then swapped out here before week one battle start. So originally I picked up the Rotom Frost. 
and obviously I dropped that whenever I got the, the Rotom Wash in, in exchange for the Suicune. So whenever I dropped the Rotom Frost, I ended up picking up Tangela as my uh, grass type. So Tangela, I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen it in action in other leagues. Just a really fat Pokemon with an Aviolite. It can take ground moves really well. It can just pivot around without even clicking a recovery move because of Regenerator. And it just provides a lot of good grass support for my team. Access to Leech Seed, Sleep Powder, stuff that you'd want your grass type to be able to have. Uh, not going to say too much more about it just because you know it's a tangle it's not going to be incredible by any means but it's it can do some damage and for a tier 5 that tangle is it's a, it's a pretty solid option for for that tier in my opinion so uh, just a solid grass type kind of an obligatory grass type on the team I wanted to have something that could switch into powders and leech seeds of of my uh, my opponent's side so I felt like that was a good option to grab when I was going to have to drop the the rodent form anyways so that is the tangle and then finally to round out this draft I wanted to get another Pokemon that I've never had before, and I also wanted to get just another way to help me out against flying types to take some pressure off of my other flying resist on my team, which is only the Rotom Wash at this point. And uh, yeah, so I went ahead and grabbed Regirock here in this slot. So Regirock, obviously, it's, it's a Regirock. It's not incredible by any means, but it is really fat. It's another rocker for my team. So now with, along with Mar Alolan Marowak and the Cobalion and Mew, I have four rockers on my draft, which is pretty solid. That's about what I would want on any 11 Mon draft like this. So that's pretty nice. But yeah, overall, it's just fat. It's here to take fire hits. It's here to take flying hits. And it's pretty much able to come in most matchups due to the, the collective typing on my team as well. So don't be at all surprised to see Regirock come a few times this season. Even with only eight games during the regular season, Regirock could easily come to half of them. It just kind of depends on how the how the matchups look and how the other members of my team match up as well. So uh, anyway, that is the team that we are rocking for this season of the last battle circuit. Make sure to let me know what you think about the team in the comments below. Uh, overall, I'm pretty happy with it after the transactions. I think it came together pretty nicely. I think Mega Beedrill is going to be able to shine really well with this draft. And I love Mega Beedrill in combination with Zygarde 50. With Zygarde 50 kind of forcing people to bring their grass types, Mega Beedrill abuses that so hard. And that's pretty much just going to be free U-turns left and right. And if they decide to go into their best responses to the Mega Beedrill, that's going to usually be really nice for the Zygarde or even nice for my uh, other momentum users on my draft as well. So I think the synergy of this draft is very nice. I also love the fact that there's a lot of Pokemon here that I really haven't had the chance to use much, if at all, throughout the past couple years of uh, Sun and Moon draft format. So yeah, just a really exciting team to use. Again, let me know what you think about the the uh, the the, uh, the team in the comments below, and make sure to check out the other draft analysis uploads that should be going up from the other coaches today, or at least in the next few days. I'll make sure to link all the coaches down in the description below, so make sure to go give them a look as well. The week one battles will be coming up here next Sunday, uh, so you can be looking forward to that. I'm not. I'm probably going to. Okay, I haven't decided what I'm going to do for Team Builders yet, so I need you guys to let me know in the comments down below as well. Do you want to see individual Team Builder videos separate from the battles themselves for this league, or would you rather me to just kind of go over the team very briefly in the battle video and then spend more time on the on the battle itself? So just let me know what you think about that as well in the comments below. Uh, just kind of help me decide what I want to do for, for Team Builders on this league. Uh, so anyways, that's about all I have to say. Thanks for watching, guys and I will see you all in the next one next weekend. Peace.